Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Did you just get a 3D printer? Maybe you got one for Christmas, maybe for your birthday. Maybe you just couldn't stand being somebody who doesn't 3D print their own things anymore. Well, congrats to you. Maybe it was a Creality, maybe it was the Ender 3 V2, which seems like a pretty good beginner printer. Uh, personally, I have the Ender 3, the old, you know, the ver old version, but it's it still prints very nicely. So maybe you got that. And you're wondering, how do I start printing stuff? I'm ready to start printing. How do I get a model to print and get it ready to print on my printer. Well, that is what we're going to cover today um, because there are lots of places you can go to find models. Like you can go to Yegi, which is actually a 3D print model search engine, or you could go to uh, Colts 3D. A very popular one that I go to a lot is Thingiverse. Um, and, and then what we're gonna do, once we find something that we want, uh, then we're going to slice it in Cura. And uh, this, is, this is the website for the Cura Slicer software. That's what it's called. It's called a slicer. That's the type of software that you use to, to tell your printer how to print. Uh, let's go to Thingiverse right here. And uh, there's all kinds of really cool stuff. But this one actually caught my eye. It's on the main page here. And with Thingiverse, at least, you don't even need an account to download something. So I clicked on this. We're going to go to this page here. Um, and so just, just in case you are brand new to Thingiverse, Thingiverse, this is what it looks like. This is how it well, this is how it looks for now anyway, until they change it. Um, and so right here, there's a, a, a blue button that says download all files. You can do, you can click that right there. And it's it was, tries to show me an ad, but I have an ad blocker. So that's kind of lame, but that's okay uh, because, you know, it's free. So uh, down here in the summary, so those files are being downloaded right now. Um, so down here you have the summary. So this is just where people can tell about their design. And sometimes there's important information in here that you want to pay attention to a lot of times that's just kind of like happens to be how they printed it some models it's really important others it's not if you click right here where it says four thing files you'll notice that you can actually download individual files because a lot of times there'll be like a whole you know there might be a bunch of files like different versions of the model and these are stl models by the way that's what you want to use to put into slice uh, the, the slicer that's the most common dot stl it stands for standard triangle language i want to say but i i could be wrong but that sounds that sounds about right um anyway so you can download the individual ones if you want so just for example we could download that one and it will download just that file uh, without the rest of those um, now if you haven't already uh, you can hop over to cura or the ultimaker ultimaker that's hard to say ultimaker website and you can actually download cura for free which is really cool so download that and uh, let's see for me i'm using a mac so i'll click mac and i'll say download now and then we'll say okay and then uh, it says thanks, and then it's gonna download. So go ahead and download that, whether you're using Windows or, or uh, Mac or whatever. And there should be a wizard that pops up that guides you through that process. And uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we are in Cura. This is the slicer software. This plane right here represents our 3D printer bed. I'm not gonna go into like all the details of this, but we're gonna cover some of the, some of the basics here. So up at the, the top left-hand corner, you'll see uh, right now it says Creality CR10. If you haven't already, you wanna make sure that you set up your printer um, your printer settings. So uh, if if you bought like a mainstream printer and, it's in, in, and it is in its stock configuration, so just as it comes from the factory, then one of these presets should fit just right for your printer. So for example, um, I'm gonna click Add Printer. Okay, and then we actually want a printer that is a non-network printer because um, I just click that little drop down because this is not connected to the network. It's just standalone. I'm going to scroll down here to Creality and we'll use my Ender 3 for this example. So Creality Ender 3 right there and we'll just call it Ender 3. It's actually gonna come up as Ender 3 number two because I already have my other Ender 3 in here. Pretty much, you should be good to go unless you have something different about your machine. So we'll just click next. And so we have our uh, printer set up right here. And that the basically the, the most important part of that um, is that it's going to determine how large this build area shows up so that way we we know where the model is going to be on the print bed and how much room it's going to take up because that's 
that's pretty important or could be pretty important. So uh, now let's go ahead and get our model in here. So let's click on the uh, top left folder icon. And then you see here, actually, we have uh, we have that one we have that one uh, model that we downloaded individually, the hook hook.stl. But we actually can't get to the other ones because they're in a zip folder. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to go into Finder if you're on a Mac or your uh, what are it folders or something you know, on PC, and then uh, we need to go into here and right here there it is uh, foldable wall hook print in place. This is our uh, .zip file. So if I double click on this one, sometimes you have to like right click and then say um, uh, extract um, or unzip. I think it's extract. Anyway, then the, uh, the actual folder will come up. We click on that folder. Really what we want is right here, these files. These are the actual STL files and that's how they show up. So now that we have the files here, we can uh, we can actually drag and drop the files as well. Let's try printing this, this hook underscore short dot STL file. And so this guy right here, now we have our model in Cura and it just shows up here in yellow and you can uh, left click to select the object and hold down right click and you can orbit around the object and rotate around the object which is very helpful uh, and it will auto center when you click on that object. Um, so that's cool, but this is actually not the orientation that we want to print this in. We actually want to stand this upright. If you remember in the description here, um, it actually says, the description on Thingiverse, it says, uh, I suggest printing the orientation shown at the fifth picture for printing. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. So this picture is what they're saying. So let's change that. So let's go in here and on the left hand side, there are some options that you can uh, you can move the model around with uh, with this mode. If you click on this mode, we can scale it and change the size of the model, but we don't want to do that. Uh, the one below it, the mode below it is the rotation uh, tool and that allows us to rotate it. We can do like a, we can click on those arrows and do a 90 degree rotation or we can hold and drag. We can snap the ro snap the rotation to like specific degree increments, or we can just do free rotation. But here's a really powerful tool is you can select face to align to the build plate. So we'll click that and then we'll click which, which face or which side of this object we want to be flat on the build plate. So we can click the bottom, bam. Now this is how it's going to print. So very cool. That was basically step one. So now we have the orientation correct. The next thing we want to do is check our settings. Now I don't want to get you overwhelmed because it's important to just, you know, as long as you don't blow something up or make something catch on fire, it's important to just get started and then uh, learn as you go. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to bog you down with all of these uh, options that we have uh, up here because there are like a lot of options. And as you get more advanced in this, um, you can deal with more of these, but that's like way too much. So what I would suggest if it's not set like this already on the right hand side profile settings. Oh, and if this drop down menu isn't there, you can click on the top right, that standard quality thing. It'll bring down the uh, settings menu. Um, and what you can do is click on those little bars or the little burger symbol and you can click uh, instead of custom selection like I have it, you can click basic. And so we could probably just print this just fine with basic. Um, and so the basic settings you can actually and then you can also go with these defaults right here. So we could do standard quality um, and then you have custom settings like I have a lot of custom settings because I make a custom setting for like almost every single uh, print that I do. Uh, not every single print, but, and then I have like some basic settings for, for my printers. But anyway, let's try the standard quality setting. A very important thing that I forgot to mention is at the, at the very top, uh, if, we, if you are in the prepare stage, if you look at the very top uh, middle bar, you'll see where it says generic PLA 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And this part is important if you're going to use the default settings, or the default uh, quality settings, because this is where it will it will determine the temperature and the nozzle size. And the nozzle size is very important. Now, most of the time, it is going to be 0.4 millimeters, 
Um, but you want to make sure that it is set properly if you're going to use the default settings. Um, and then also PLA, that's the type of material, and it's just generic. Now that we have the settings, that we're just going to go with the standard quality settings, like just that we're just going to try it. Uh, and then at the bottom right, you can click slice. Now this part is very important, especially if you're printing a model that you're not quite like sure how it's going to turn out. And then you click preview. What you can do is it actually shows you uh, in, it shows you these different colors and what those colors are. If you look, uh, if you click on this bar, at, like the middle bar at the top, of the of the screen it'll say line type and that that will show you uh the color codes for the different lines uh, the shell is red the infill is going to be orange which you'll see in a moment and the inner wall is green those are the the three big ones right there so on the right hand side of the screen you'll see a scroll bar and you can actually scroll up and down layer by layer and, you, and once you select the scroll bar you can actually use your mouse or i mean your your keyboard arrows as well to go up and down layer by layer and it's really really cool you may not care about this right now but if you're printing a model that's like difficult to print you'll you'll want to see what's happening uh layer by layer at you know at key points i should have said what this was this is a this is a fold down bracket i think you got that from the pictures but i don't think i actually said it this is a folding bracket and it's a print in place so it will fold up um you'll notice the layer height uh, is set to 0.2 millimeters, and that is what was suggested in the uh, the Thingiverse uh, description for this model. Um, and that's that's basically so we have enough tolerance so that the part will actually move freely uh, after it's been printed. And just to be thorough, and you can skip this if you if you want to, I'm going to blast through all of the profile settings right here, just in case you're wondering what they mean and kind of what they are. So we're, again, we're using the standard, def the default standard quality, which is 0.2 millimeter layer height, and so basically how tall each layer is. Uh, so quality, that's our layer height. It's set to 0.2. And also in this case, it's going. It, it doesn't say here, but it's going to be 0.2 four millimeter uh, line width and that's going usually it's going to match your nozzle and in this case it will shell shell is going to be like the outside of the model so like the walls and in this case we have wall thickness wall line count the the walls are uh we're using two walls and then that's 0.4 each so 0.8 is total wall thickness um top and bottom thickness is going to be 0.8 and so that's going to be uh uh, four top layers and four bottom layers since it's 0.2 millimeter layer height don't worry about all the numbers if that sounds confusing i'm just trying to go through with, go through this in case you have questions about it but uh infill is going to be 20 percent, and that's your density and basically that means that you have you have 20 percent of actual plastic in on the inside of the model let me actually slice this model and preview it so i can show you this uh, as we're as we're talking about this so the infill right here is going to be this orange stuff that's that's the orange stuff in there infill pattern is set to cubic that's basically the uh the sort of the shape that the infill is going to make usually i'll use like lines but but cubic works pretty well uh, depending on the model it's uh it's good because you get strength from a lot of different sides uh, material now this is a very important one um, if nothing else, make sure that your material temperature matches the material or the, the filament that you're using. So in this case, it was set to 200. I'm going to set it to 220 degrees Celsius uh, for my uh, PLA that I'm going to be using. It's like a pro PLA. And then I'm going to uh, set the bed temperature to 60 degrees Celsius. And 60 degrees is pretty much a, it's pretty much like the standard for bed temperature um uh, let's see we covered material speed speed uh 50 millimeters per second that should that should be fine uh travel uh enable retraction uh typically you want to you definitely want to have retraction set up if you're using a bowden style um extruder which is what we have on the ender 3 it's it's when you have that tube that comes off of the extruder and then it goes and it, uh, it guides the filament all the way into the actual uh, nozzle end. Um, Z-hop when, retra when re retracted. Um, I don't really, I don't care. Uh, so we'll leave that off. That, that's when it like, it raises up a little bit before it moves. Uh, cooling, that's for our, our actual nozzle uh, 
uh, cooling fan. Uh, enable print cooling, fan speed 100%. That's probably fine. Um, typically, you get like more um, optimal prints or more, I don't know, less melted prints uh, when you have a higher fan speed. So that can be good, especially since we're doing something for dimensional accuracy. That might be nice. Support, we don't need support. Support is if you have a piece that's just hanging over empty space and you need to sacrifice some plastic. Think of it like a scaffolding for your model. That's pretty much what support is. We don't need it. Uh, build plate adhesion, that's that skirt. Uh, right now they're calling it a skirt. So right here, uh, that's this. these, uh, I don't know, teal lines around the model, those three right there. So that's a skirt. And uh, part of what a skirt does is kind of just get the get the uh, extruder to uh, pump out the filament and get a nice get a nice filament flow before you actually start printing your model. Some other options, like the most common would probably be brim. And that actually just to show you here that actually puts the lines right around the model in this case, and that helps it stick to the bed. Um, but you don't always need to do that. And, and then some, in some cases, it's just a big old pain. So, uh, but, and again, if you're like, oh, I don't, I don't want this many lines or I want to change this or what, you can change all kinds of stuff when you go into like the advanced settings and, and that sort of thing. But we'll just keep it super simple or somewhat simple, as simple as I can today, uh, because that's prob this will probably work just fine. So we kept pretty much everything the same. We did change the printing temperature because that does need to match our filament and we know that that we're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and so that's all uh going to work well i can go up here and i say can say collapse all categories to keep it nice and neat so um let's let's just slice it again it'll it'll uh it'll sort of unslice itself or you'll have to slice it every time you uh change the uh change a parameter um so Right down here at the bottom, it says it's going to take 53 minutes and use five grams of filament, roughly. I mean, those are estimates. Um, wow, that's actually this thing is actually quite a bit larger than I uh, than I had thought that it was. Also, on the bottom center of the screen, you can actually see how your model, like what the nozzle is go is going to do, and the movements that it's going to make. And so those blue lines that go across the model, those are the travel lines. So when the when the nozzle head is not actually printing, but it's just moving, that's uh, that's what those blue lines are. So this can be really useful if you're if you need to print a model in a very specific way. You can see how that works. So anyway, without further ado, uh, we can actually hit save to file. It's going to pop up this little window right here. Um, usually the way I like to name things is I like to name, I like to put the most important stuff in the very beginning of the, uh, of the actual uh, name because you can only see about ni like 19 letters on the actual uh, printer screen. So if I put the important information at the end, then I wouldn't I yeah, I wouldn't see it and it would be very confusing and that has happened to me before so we'll say hook short dot uh, this is going to be uh, Creality Ender three so C E three is how I do it and then we'll say dot P L A actually I don't even need to do dot I'll just say P L A because that's what I'm printing with so this just tell, this way I can see this file and I can know that it's for the the Ender three and it's for PLA, which is going to tell me about like the temperature and maybe the printing speed and stuff like that. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's good enough. So it's a dot G code file right there. We can click save. And then if you actually wanted to save the entire workspace and how this model is oriented on the uh, print bed and all that stuff, you would go up to the top and go to file. And then you could actually say save project right there and it would give you it tells you this information and then you can click save and it will give you a dot 3mf file um, and that will actually uh, like keep all of the cura settings um, as well as your profile settings if you want to save uh, a profile like you change some settings and you want to save that uh, print profile you can click on this uh, down arrow right there and then at the bottom of this drop down it, you can say create profile from current settings and overrides, or you can update a profile 
or discard current profile and do all kinds of other stuff. Once you've saved your G code file, you can go into your uh, folder finder thing on your computer and insert the SD card from your printer into your computer. Drag our G code file for this little hook, drag it to the SD card. It's going to go into the SD card. We can eject it and then we can stick it in the 3D printer and start printing. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer or maybe we have some other 3D printers in the audience that would be able to. Thanks for watching and I will see you again very soon.